Welcome to another session on capital budgeting. In previous session, we have discussed the non-discounting techniques of capital budgeting. Now in this session, we are going to discuss the discounting techniques of capital budgeting. In previous session, we have seen how payback period is calculated and how accounting rate of return is calculated. But now we are going to discuss how net present value is calculated. Okay. This is one of the most important topic under the topic of capital budgeting. Now, what is net present value? This, this net present value actually forecast cash flows of investment project on realistic assumptions. It is the one which is which actually gives us the appropriate discounting rate that should be identified to discount the forecasted cash flows. Okay, whatever what, what was missing in our previous class that means we were not discounting the cash inflows in the previous uh, discount, uh, non discounting techniques, but now we are going to discount the cash flows as well in this technique. This in this case the appropriate discount rate is the project's opportunity cost of capital and the present value of cash flow should be calculated. So, the project should be accepted if the NPV that means net present value is positive or I can say it is more than 0. The net present value should be find, found out by subtracting present value of cash outflows from present value of cash inflows. Okay. So, we ne first need to convert all the cash flows into present terms, okay. whether it is cash outflow or it is cash inflow. Now, by subtracting cash outflow from total cash inflows, now we are going to get inflow in number of years. So, from the formula that is visible on the screen, we can say we can see that NPV is equal to in the bracket the this C1 divided by 1 plus K plus C2 divided by 1 plus K raised to the power 2. This is how we have converted the cash inflows that we are receiving year after year into present value term. Now, by adding these value, we get the present value of total cash inflows and now from total cash inflows, we will deduct or subtract cash outflow okay. and this can also be represented in the form of the equation which are which is given on the lower side of the screen okay. and this value, the amount that we are going to get from this is our, our, is our NPV, net present value. So, when we consider the acceptance rule of net present value, so we are going to accept the project when the NPV is positive. Now, this is the case where we have only one single project and we have to decide okay, whether we should accept or reject. So, if the NPV is positive, we have the opportunity to accept the project. But if the NPV is negative, we can or we should actually reject the project. But in case the NPV is 0, so, it is up to us whether we want to accept or reject the project. Okay. So, this is the case when we have only one project and we have to take the decision. Now, what if we have multiple projects? So, in case of multiple or mutually exclusive project, so we are going to accept the one with the higher NPV. Okay. So, the project which has the highest NPV should be ranked first. Second one is ranked as second and this is how we can rank the projects using NPV as well. Now, let us see the application of the concept of NPV with the help of this example which is visible on the screen. We need to calculate NPV of an initial investment of rupees 2 lakh which for which the net cash inflow is 60,000 every year for 6 years. We are assuming cost of fund, cost of capital to be 8 percent in this case. We have to suggest that project is acceptable or not. So, from the example you can see that this is the clear case of equal cash inflows because this company is going to receive 60,000 for 6 years, the similar cash inflow for the 6 years. Now, let us see the solution, the, the, the how we are going to solve this example. So, our cash inflow need to be converted into present terms and our cash outflow is already in present term. 
So, cash inflow that is you remember the concept of PVAF that we have discussed in time value in the case uh, where we have discussed time value of money. If not, please refer to that video where we have discussed the concept of PVAF. Using the concept of PVAF, we can calculate the value of present value of cash inflows. So, here cash inflow of 60,000 for 6 years at the rate of 8 percent is equal to 60,000 multiplied by PVAF present value annuity factor because 60,000 is the similar amount that the company is receiving year after year for 8 percent 6 years is 4.623. Now, we multiply this value with 60,000 and the present value of cash inflow is 2,77,380 whereas the present value of cash outflow is 2 lakh rupees. Now, NPV is present value of cash inflow that is 2,77,380 rupees and we are going to subtract present value of cash outflow that is 2 lakh rupees from this. So, the NPV net present value is rupees 77,380. Since the NPV is positive in this case, we will clearly accept this project. Okay? So, this was the case where the cash inflows were equal. Now, what if the cash inflows are not equal or unequal? Now, let us see one example of unequal cash inflows for NPV as well. In this case, we need to calculate NPV if initial investment is rupees 10 lakh, the life of the machinery is 5 years. Now, is it feasible to buy this machinery or not? This is what we have to decide. The cash flows for the coming years will be visible on your screen uh, on the next slide. So, we can see from this table that the cash outflow is 10 lakh rupees at year 0 that means now in present. Cash inflow for first year is 2 lakh, for second year it is 2 lakh, for third year 3 lakh, for fourth year also it is 3 lakh, for fifth year it is 3 lakh 50 thousand. So, the cash inflow is different in different years okay. and the cost of capital in this case is 10 percent. Right. Now, we have to analyze this project. What we will do? Now, we have to again calculate the present value of cash flows. So, the, in this case, we will prepare a table. Now, the table might be visible on your screen by now. So, we can see that for year 0, the cash outflow is 10 lakh. Since it is outflow, so we can write this amount in bracket. Okay. The PVF factor is 1 in this case and cash outflow is calculated or visible for from first year onwards in the lower rows. So, for first year it is 2 lakh, second year 2 lakh, third year 3 lakh, fourth year 3 lakh and fifth year 3 lakh 50 thousand. Now, these individual values has to be multiplied by PVF factor. Now, the cash flow is different year after year. So, we are going to use PVF factor for 10 percent because the cost of capital in this case is 10 percent. Okay. So, for first year it is 0 0.909, for second year it is 0 0.826, for third year it is 0 0.751, for fourth year it is 683, 0 0.683, for fifth year it is 0 0.621. From where we will get this PVF values? We will get these values from PVF table. Okay? We can also calculate these values using our calculators. Now, by multiplying the values given in column 2 and column 3, we will get the values which are there in column 4. So, 10 lakh multiplied by 1, we get 1. For first year, the value is 1,81,800 and similarly, we will calculate the values for each row. Now, by adding these values and subtracting the values of cash inflow, we are going to add all the cash inflows. Now, we will subtract 10 lakh rupees which is cash outflow from this. Okay. The value that we will get is 5 lakh, uh, sorry, 5450 rupees that too in negative terms. That means, the NPV is negative minus 5450. Now, since the NPV is negative in this case, we are clearly going to reject this project. Okay. So, the project should be rejected 
because the NPV is negative that is rupees minus 5450. So, this is how we decide using NPV whether we should accept the project or we should reject the project. Now, when I talk about the advantages of NPV method, the best thing is it is considering time value of money. It is considered as a true measure of profitability and the values that we are going to receive. Suppose, we have more than uh, 2 projects. So, the values that we are going to receive for project 1, project 2, project 3, the NPV values, we can add these NPVs value. So, this is also one of the advantage that the values are additive in nature, values of NPV. Now, what is the advantage? Suppose, I have 10 lakh rupees. Now, I have 3 projects to choose from, okay. but uh, uh, one project is costing so, uh, 5 lakh rupees, another pro project is costing 4 lakh rupees and the third project is costing 3 lakh rupees. But according to my budget, I can choose only 2. So, I will calculate NPV for all the 3 projects and I can choose any 2 projects out of this, okay, considering the amount that I have with me. So, this is the biggest advantage, another advantage I can say for NPV. But again, it has certain limitations as well, like it the cash flow estimation is involved. So, if we are making mistake in calculation, any kind of calculation or if we are not getting the, the amount of ca cash flow correctly, the value of NPV will be wrong. Now, another disadvantage is we need discount rate for this. And sometime it is difficult to determine the exact discount rate. So, this method of NPV is very much sensitive to discount rate. So, if the discount rate is changing or we are changing the discount rate, the value of NPV will also change and we would not be able to reach to any conclusion. So, these were the limitations of NPV. Another method that of uh, discounting technique we have is internal rate of return method. Now, internal rate of return we also call it IRR is the rate that equates the investment outlay with the present value of cash inflow received after a certain period of time. This also implies that rate of return at which or we can call it that discounting rate at which our NPV is 0. That means, we are in such a situation where our profits are equal to our expenditure. We are in the situation of no profit, no loss. Okay. So, that rate of return where our profit, our net present value is 0 is called our IRR. IRR can be calculated using the same formula of NPV with a slight change that our cash flow which were which uh, in case of NPV which were on right hand side earlier, we will take it to left hand side now. Why? Because IRR is that rate of return at which our cash inflows, present value of cash inflows is equal to present value of cash outflow. So, from the formula which is visible on the screen, in the very first equation, the topmost equation, the R in the denominator is our IRR. This is what we have to calculate in this case. Okay. And this R value is, should be such that uh, which makes our left hand side and right hand side equal. That means, our NPV is 0, right. So, when I consider the acceptance rule of IRR, we will accept the project wherever our R, IRR is greater than K, K is our cost of capital. We will reject the project when our R is less than K. And again, we may decide may accept or may reject the project whenever R is equal to K, right. Now, let us try and understand the concept of IRR with the help of one example. The example is visible on the screen. Now, a firm is evaluating a proposal, the project that costs rupees 20 lakh and it has the equal cash inflows of rupees 5 lakh at the end of each next 6 years. There is no salvage value of this project and the cutoff rate is 12 percent. The standard rate of the company is 12 percent. We need to find out the value of IRR. Okay. For finding the value of IRR, we need to calculate the values of NPV. For NPV, we need R okay, rate. That rate that we need to choose, it is not given in the question 
So, I am choosing or I am considering 12 percent here. This is the random value that I have picked okay, for calculating NPV. You may take it as 10 percent. So, NPV at the rate of 12 percent is calculated here and the value is visible on the screen where 5 lakh which is the cash inflow and it is a regular cash inflow it is multiplied by PVAF value okay, present value NUT factor. The value of this PVAF is taken from PVAF table for 12 percent okay, and the value is 4.111. Okay. 5 lakh when I am multiplying this value with, with 4.111 the value is 20 lakh 55,500. Now, this is the present value of cash inflow. I will subtract the value of investment from this which is 20 lakh and the value that I will get is 55,500 rupees. So, the NPV value at 12 percent is 55,500 rupees. Now, since this is a positive value, but what I need? I need IRR is such that should be such that our NPV should be 0. So, I have to make our NPV 0. Now, what, do I, what will I do? I will increase this R value so that my NPV will be reduced. So, next I will calculate NPV at the rate of 13 percent. Okay. In the similar way like I have calculated NPV at the rate of 12 percent. So, the NPV when it is calculated for 13 percent rate of return the value is minus 100. Okay. It is not 0 at 13 percent as well, it is minus 100. Okay. So, it shows that our R, IRR is somewhere between 12 percent and 13 percent and it is more on the side of 13 percent only because it is giving us value minus 100 which, which is little more than 0. Okay. But I need to get the exact value of IRR which is between 12 and 13 percent. For this, I will do a process we call it interpolation. Okay. How I will do interpolation? I will place the value here in one equation which is visible on the screen and I will calculate IRR. So, our IRR is equal to 12 percent which is the minimum amount or the lesser amount of R which I have used. So, 12 percent plus 20,55,500 which is the present value of cash inflows at the rate of 12 percent minus 20 lakh which is the value of investment. Now, this whole amount will be divided by 20 lakh 55,500 minus 19 lakh 99,000 which is the present value of cash inflows at the rate of 13 percent. Okay. And this whole value of the equation will be multiplied by the difference of R that we have used to calculate these two NPVs. Okay. Now, if you have started solving your question from 10 percent and the next NPV that you have chosen is 15 percent. So, the difference will be 15 minus 10 that is 5. We have to multiply the whole equation by 5. Now, because here what I have done, I have taken 12 percent and 13 percent the difference is only 1. So, I will multiply the whole equation by 1. Now, by solving this equation I get the IRR value which is 12.98 percent. My standard rate was 12 percent, my IRR is 12.98 percent which is more than my standard rate. So, since my IRR is more than the standard rate I will accept this project. Okay. This is how we take decision using IRR method. The last method here is profitability index. Now, this is the ratio of the present value of cash inflow and this is calculated at the required rate of return to the initial cash outflow of the investment. Now, PI or profitability index can be calculated with the help of this formula. Okay. So, instead of now my subtracting cash outflow from the cash inflow, we will divide cash inflows by present value of cash outflows. Okay. So, again there is just a slight change in the formula that was uh, considered un under the case of NPV. So, when we consider the acceptance rule for PI, we will accept the projects when PI is greater than 1 
we will reject the project when our pi is less than 1 and we may accept or reject the project if pi is equal to 1. But the project with the positive NPV will have a pi greater than 1. Okay. And when the pi is less than 1 that means the project's NPV is negative. Okay. Now, let us try and understand with the help of one example. Now, here we have two computers, computer A and computer B. The cost of computer A is 56,000, cost of computer B is 60,000. The cash inflows of these computers are given in the table which is visible on the screen. Okay. Uh, in the first column, we have number of years because the life of the computers is 5 year. In the second column, we have cash inflows from computer A. In the third column, we have cash inflows from computer B. We need to calculate profitability index when our cost of capital is 10 percent. Right? Now, we will see the solution of this problem. First, we will see the case of computer A. So, I will pick the values from the table which was given in the question from the first two columns where we have year and the values or cash inflows of computer A. We, I will use present value factor to convert all these inflows into present value term. So, P V or present value at the rate of 10 percent the values are derived from the table and present uh, from the P V uh, F table and presented here in this table. Okay. So, in case of first year the value is 0 0.909 and similarly we get the values of 5 years. Now, we will multiply the values which are given in second column and third column to get the values in the fourth column that is present value of cash inflows from computer A. So, in first year it is 12,726, similarly in second year it is 13,216 and this is how we calculate the values for all the 5 time periods and we will add these cash inflows for all the 5 time periods and the total value or I can say the total value of present uh, or the total present value of cash inflows from computer A is 68,645 rupees. Okay. While the investment was 56,000, this is submission, uh, the, the, this is the cost of computer which was given in the question. From this we will calculate our PI for computer A which is equal to cash inflows that is 68,645 divided by cash outflow that is 56,000. So, P i in this case is 1.225. Using the same method, we will calculate the P i for computer B. We derive the values from the question in column A, column B. We use the P V f factor for 10 percent in third column. By multiplying the values in second and third column, we get the values in the fourth column. And the total value, present value of cash inflows from computer B will be 71,521. By dividing this value by the cash outflow that is 60,000 which was the cost of computer, we get the PI value which is 1.192. Okay. So, PI from computer 1 is 1.225, PI from computer B is 1.192. So, both the machines or both the computers are acceptable in this case because the PI is more than 1. But if we have to choose one out of these two we will choose computer A because computer A has better PI than computer B. Right? This is how we decide or we take decision on the basis of PI method of capital budgeting. <coughs> the advantage of PI method is that it consider all the cash flows and also the concept of time value of money is applicable. But again the limitation is we need to calculate or we need to have all the cash flows. If any of the cash flow is missing or wrong, we would not be able to reach to the right conclusion. There is one more method, we call it discounted payback me method which was not mentioned in the beginning, is also part of discounting techniques. It is similar, exactly similar to the payback period that we have calculated under non-discounting technique with the only difference that the cash inflows need to be converted into present value. We need to apply the concept of time value of money, the calculation, the estimation, the way everything is similar to payback period. The only difference is we convert the inflows into 
present value terms before calculating our payback period, right. So, these were the methods, these were the methods of capital budgeting, these were the techniques based on which we take the decision, investment decisions which are the most crucial decisions to make, okay, in terms of finance. So, as we conclude our lecture on capital budgeting today, let us quickly recap what we have discussed today. Now, capital budgeting is a fundamental process that businesses use to evaluate potential major projects or our investments, right. Now, by analyzing these projects, companies can make informed decisions that maximize their long term profitability and the value. We understood today what is capital budgeting and we explored various non-discounting and discounting techniques. Okay, under non-discounting techniques, we have discussed payback period method, we have seen accounting rate of return. Under discounting techniques, we have seen NPV, net present value method, IRR, internal rate of return method, profitability index method and a glimpse of discounting payback period method as well. We have also discussed, we have seen, we have done numericals based on these methods as well in today's class to have the clear understanding to see the application of these capital budgeting methods. So, in summary, in nutshell, the effective capital budgeting ensures that resources are allocated efficiently, risks are managed and strategic objectives are met. As future managers and financial analysts, mastering these concepts will empower you to make decisions that derive growth and sustainability in your organization. So, thank you for your attention today and I encourage you to continue exploring this vital area of finance. Happy learning!